Hi there. In this video, we're going to be talking through another example of how we go about using the F test. Okay, so the example which I'm thinking about here is that we have uh, an individual's test scores, I mean, let's say the SATs, and we're trying to look at the factors which contribute to uh, an individual's ability to do better in their SATs. And one thing you might think might be significant in determining how well an individual does in their SATs might be, how did their parents do? So we've sort of included a measure of parental SAT scores in our regression. And we've also included a measure of class size. So the idea here is that perhaps smaller classes lead to slightly better SAT scores. And we've also included a third variable, which is the number of siblings which an individual has. And the idea here is that there are sort of two causal stories. One of them is that if you have more siblings, perhaps you're your parents can't spend so much time teaching each of you individually, so perhaps that has a negative effect on your SATs. But there's also a sort of positive effect, which is that the more siblings you have, the more they're sort of a, a sort of passed down from your siblings to you, or that's if you're a sort of younger sibling anyway. And let's say we ran this regression and the sort of the T stat on parental SAT T scores was quite high. So it's quite obvious that parental SATs seem to have some sort of explanatory ability in terms of explaining how well an individual does in their SATs. But let's say that the T statistics on beta 2 and beta 3, in other words, uh, are sort of coefficients on classroom size and siblings, were marginal, so that they weren't quite significant. So our null hypothesis here is going to be that the coefficients on classroom size and the number of siblings are both jointly equal to zero. So that's beta two is equal to beta three, which is equal to zero. So notice that I've made the conscious decision here not to test for insignificance of um, beta one in the population, because if we found in our sample that this has a really, really high T stat, then it might seem to suggest that parental SAT scores were at least having some explanatory factor or some explanatory ability in explaining your dependent variable. Okay, so we're just testing for significance of these last two variables. So how do we go about doing this? Well, we would need to run a second regression, right? What would this second regression look like? Well, it would be, can I explain SAT scores in terms of solely their parental SAT scores? So notice that this is in fact the restricted model because I've restricted in the second model the effect of classroom size and number of siblings to be equal to zero. Okay, so perhaps we run the second regression and the sum of square residuals um, is slightly higher, so it goes up to 120. And let's say that we had like a sample size of 30 individuals. Okay, so how can we go about testing whether these two variables are in fact significant? Well, we need to form our F statistic. How do we do that? Well, we take our value of the sum of square residuals from the restricted res regression, which is 120, and then we take off the sum of square residuals from the unrestricted regression. And we need to compare that with something. Well, what we compare it with is the sum of square residuals under the original unrestricted model. And then we need to standardize it. So we need to divide the top by the number of restrictions which we're placing on our model which in this context is two. And the bottom, well, we need to divide the bottom, which is the sum of square residuals um, and the unrestricted case, by the number of degrees of freedom which our original model has. Well, the number of degrees of freedom in our original model is, well, we've got 30 data points in our sample, but we've got sort of four restrictions because we've got sort of restrictions on alpha, beta one, beta two, and beta three. So we've got sort of four constraints which come about as a sort of first order conditions in uh, least squares maximization or minimization of cost function rather. And we know under the null hypothesis at least then this um, sort of repeated taking observations from our sample should follow a sampling distribution which is given by an F distribution with two degrees of freedom for its first sort of input and its second degrees of freedom will in this case be 26. So what would we need to do? We need to look up in a um, degrees of, in, in our sort of F table, we need to look up a sort of two degrees of freedom for the first one 
And for the second degrees of freedom, we need to sort of continue up until we get 26. So we'd look up this sort of value here in our table, uh, and we're sort of looking for a sort of 0.05. So we'd be looking at that sort of that particular table with a p-value of 0.05. So the idea is that um, we would compare our value that which we get for our f-statistic with the value, this critical value which we get from our f-table. So our um, value which we get for our particular F statistic, well, the top is just going to be 10, and the bottom is going to be roughly um, what's going to be roughly three. So we get a, we're going to get a value of F which is roughly something like three and a third. Um, and I mean, this is quite marginal in, in this case. Um, so I, I can't tell by just looking at that F number whether we actually do have joint significance of these second two variables. So in this particular context, it would be particularly important to look up um, whether this value which we got for our F statistic was in fact significant or whether in fact this was actually greater than our critical value being specific. Yeah, and if it was greater than the critical value, then we would reject the null hypothesis that our two variables were jointly insignificant. In the next video, we're going to talk about the relationship between the T distribution and the F distribution, and we're going to be comparing the two. I'll see you then.